presentation. Um, we will begin the meeting by standing up and joining me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of, of the United States, States of America, America. And, and to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. Gladly. President Wasserman. Here. Vice President Baker is absent. Secretary Kaminsky here. Treasurer Brandstead. Here. Member Gorton. Here. Member McFarlane is absent. Member Vanderkellen. Here. Okay. Thank you. We do have a quorum. And just so the public is aware, uh, Member Baker is returning to daughter to school today, and Member McFarland is um, dealing with a uh, uh, health issue in his family. Okay, uh, moving on, we'll move into the consent agenda. Uh, for those who have the agenda in front of them, we have approval of the regular meetings from the last meeting, which was over a month ago. Uh, staff member resignations and the effective dates, there's quite a list there. Uh, a resignation by Amy uh, Slaybaugh for her assistant principalship at Dow High. Uh, some employment recommendations on uh, multiple teachers. Uh, bids uh, for wireless phone communication devices for maintenance grounds and the high school building managers. And approval to deliver purchase order to, to, to Trivalent of Granville, uh, Granville <coughs> Michigan uh, for 10 laptops to replace 10 computers dedicated to the IBR program at Middle High and Dow High. Uh, bids have been accepted and tabulation provided for replacement of the fire riser component of the fire suppression sprinkler system at Dow High. And approval of payment systems bills for the month of June 2013 on the agenda. And a list of purchase orders are available that came through the purchase card that are over $3,000 and approval of through law firm bills as stated. Any additions or deletions or comments on the consent agenda? Seeing none, I'll move into a motion for oh. approval. I move we accept consent agenda items 2.1 through 2.9. So move, or, or support, support rather. <laughs> <laughs> so supported. Said, supported by Secretary Kaminsky. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> all the ayes have it. Move on to request to address the board. We have no formal request tonight, but anybody still free to come to the microphone if they wish to address the board. Seeing none, we'll move on to Board of Education matters and presentations to the board. And I'll turn it over to Mr. Carroll. We have a recommendation tonight, this evening to, for the appointment of Marnie Melacara uh, as Special Education Supervisor. Marnie's in the audience tonight, so welcome, Marnie. Marnie will, will pr uh, primarily work in the two middle schools and support their efforts there so with the combination of the three middle schools into two that, that was much needed. And uh, we may ask Marnie to do some other things, such as work with our, some of our students at, at Seabirt. Uh, Marnie received her bachelor's degree from Central Michigan University and her degree in learning behavior and disorders from Saginaw Valley State University. So we'll welcome Marnie to the ranks. Marnie, you can make some comments. <laughs> okay. Hi, um, I am very excited about this position. I have been teaching for over 16 years. I taught in Saginaw, the public schools, um, for six. And then in 2003, I came to Central Middle School under Mr. Verlindi, and I taught there for six years in a sixth grade room. Um, I had, um, well, I guess I taught every subject there. Um, now that I think about it, uh, after six years, uh, with knowing that Central was going to be closing, I transferred to the high school where I've taught remedial reading and biology. And uh, for the last two years, I've been facilitator there at the high school. Um, I was ready for a change, some new challenges to see how the other side operates. And so when this position came available, I applied and I've been working at it for a week and it has been wonderful. It's been everything I thought. Um, I want to Thank everybody who has made it so easy for me to step in, Mr. Verlindi, Mr. Paris. Um, in addition to that, I've had great role models, uh, Ms. Greif at 
Midland High has been wonderful to work under. Danielle Rutterbush, Amy Gunther. So I've had a lot of really good examples um, that I hope to emulate in the future. Oh, yep. I need to, I need to thank my family, uh, my husband Hector, and two of my three sons are here. I have Kyan on the end and Nevin, and I have a 15-year-old who is completing segment two driver's training tonight. So you're going to be here. <laughs> But I, I thank them for their support. So, thank you. And now we'll move on to. Uh, do, do, we we take, do we need a pass no. uh, approval? It's not for approval, or just no point. It just says for information. Yes, just for information. Okay. Okay. That's what I thought too. Good. Good clarification. Okay. Uh, for action, we have a tax resolution to be read. Uh, give it over to Linda first. Yes. Uh, and this will give Dr. Kaminsky a chance to get warmed up because he <laughs> has a two page tax resolution to read. <coughs> this we send to the city and the county, and it indicates to them the rates that we need them to charge on behalf of Midland Public Schools for the December tax bill. Uh, just as a reminder to the board and to the public, we do collect summer taxes within the city of Midland on all of those properties. Uh, we do not collect taxes on the townships except in the winter, and that gives us about a 50-50 split on our revenue from local taxes. So what you have in your resolution is the 18 mills on the non-PRE, that's principal residence exempt. Uh, we also have six mills on commercial, and then the official rate on the hold harmless ended up being 1.7914 mills. Uh, and that voted levy back at the time of the passage of Proposal A was over 5.6 mills. But as I say every year, we're limited to a levy that raises $415 per pupil. And it, in the current year, that will be about 5% of the total foundation allowance on a per pupil basis. At the original passage of Proposal A, the hold harmless millage kept us at that level <coughs> above the state funded maximum with the, loss of proposal, or with the loss of the 20J money, that's no longer the case. However, it does still provide $3.3 million of our total foundation. So with that, I'll let Dr. Kaminsky read all of the details. Yeah, it's a nice and this one. does require a roll call vote. Okay. And John, do you require a, a motion first? For that? I don't see that we required a motion. Okay. Um, it'll, so I vote believe, vote at the end. Vote. Very good. Okay, here we go. And that's how the minutes in the past have led them. We always move first. Yeah. Would anybody care to make a motion to read the resolution? So I move, we read um, the text resolution. Item 4.2. Treasurer Branstad, supported by? Support. <coughs> Member Gordon, uh, all in favor of uh, proceeding with vote, we'll wait for the vote. We'll okay. Go. So here we go. Um, certification of 2013-14 fiscal year taxes. Whereas the Board of Education was authorized by the electors of Midland Public Schools on May 3, 2005 to assess up to 18 mils of the taxable valuation of the school district for 10 years, 2006 to 2015, for the general operating fund subject to the limitations of article 9 section 31 of the michigan constitution of 1963 as amended and whereas section 1211 of the revised school code as amended provides the board of education of the school district may levy 18 mills of the taxable valuation of non-homestead property within the school district for school operating purposes except that commercial personal property is exempt from 12 mills 12.0 of the mills, and that principal residents, qualified agriculture, qualified forest, and industrial personal property are exempt from such millage levy. And whereas the revised school code further provides that the supplemental millage rate, uh, which may be levied by the school district on principal residents, qualified agriculture, qualified forest, and industrial personal property may not exceed the lesser of 5.6523 mills. Uh, in parentheses, that being the capped millage rate for the school district as certified by the Michigan Department of Treasury closed caps, or the millage rate, uh, which will, when added to other revenue of the school district, provide revenues equal to the foundation allowance of the school district 
as determined in accordance with the revised school code and the state school aid act and whereas the revised school code further provides that if the number of mills from which industrial personal property is exempted is reduced under the section then the number of mills from which commercial personal property is exempted shall be reduced by this, that same number of mills and whereas public act 38 of 1999 being Michigan common law 1211.39 uh, requires that millage rate assessments be rounded down to four decimal places and whereas based upon information now available the millage rate to be levied on principal residence qualified agricultural qualified forest and industrial personal property of the school district uh, for the 2013-14 school year in order to provide the full foundation allowance amount to the school district is 1.7914 mills and whereas in accordance with the revised millage rates for the 2012-13 school year as determined by the Michigan Department of Treasury in a communication dated May 14, 2013, the corrected number of mills available for the school, or I'm sorry, for the district uh, to have levied on homestead and qualified agricultural property for the 2012-13 school year is 1.9370 mills. And whereas the tax rate of 1.9499 mills levied by the school district on principal residence qualified agricultural qualified forest and industrial personal property for the 2012-13 fiscal year resulted in revenue that was $23,354 more than the amount that uh, which should have been received by the school district under section 1211 of the revised school code. And whereas section 1211 of the revised school code provides that if a school district levies uh, millage for school operating purposes that is more than the limits of such section the amount of the resulting tax revenue surplus may be subtracted from the school district's next regular tax levy requiring in this instance a decrease in the mills which the district could otherwise levy for the 2013-14 school year uh, by 0 0.0128 mill and now therefore it be resolved that there be spread on the 2013 tax roll a tax levy on the taxable value of non-homestead property of the school district of 18.0 mills <coughs> for the general operating fund and resolve further that the exemption for principal residents, qualified agricultural, qualified forest, and industrial personal property be reduced by 16.2086 mills so that there be spread on 2013 tax roll, a tax levy on the taxable value of principal residents, qualified agricultural, qualified forest, and industrial personal property of the school district of 1.7914 mills for the general operating fund and resolve further that the exemption for commercial personal property be reduced by 4.2086 mills so that there be spread on the 2013 tax roll a tax levy on the taxable value of commercial personal property of the school district of 7.7914 mills for the generating oper general operating fund and resolve further that if revenues produced by the above levies for operating purposes result in revenues exceeding or falling short of the limits specified in section 1211 of the revised school code as amended such difference may be made up in the school district's next regular tax levy in accordance with such section and resolve further that the clerk of the city of Midland and the clerk of each township within the school district be and hereby is authorized and instructed on behalf of the school district to assess and spread the amounts and only those amounts required by the above mills in the 2013 tax roll. Time for a vote. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I'll offer up the questions before we vote. Questions or comments? Well, I think the gist of that is that we're reducing what we're levying. Is that true? By a little bit? That is true. Okay. And in general, that is true every year because as taxable values increase, mm -hmm. the size of the levy needed to raise the $415 will mean that it's reduced. Okay. Any others? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Angela. Good comment. Uh, this requires a roll call vote. Okay, gladly. President Wasserman. Yes. Vice President Baker. Uh, she's absent. Secretary Kaminsky, myself, yes. Treasurer Brandstand. Yes. Member Gorton. Yes. Member McFarland is absent. Member Vanderkellen. Yes. Okay. 5 0 vote. With the quorum, the ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you, taxpayers, for, for uh, supporting us. Okay, now we'll move on to item uh, 4.2. Three, I think that's still with Linda. Yes, it is. Uh, as you know, the tax collection on the sinking fund has expired. 
it's no longer a part of the resolution, but we did hold back uh, about close to a million dollars that we decided not to dedicate to a particular expenditure, but we kept it in order to cover emergencies that could be, that sinking fund dollars could be used to support. Uh, we have one of those this evening to bring to you, and we have already gone ahead and bid the project because of the uh, necessary time for, for this, and that is to replace the chiller compressor at Central Middle School. Uh, it has died and needs to be replaced as quickly as possible because it is our only way of controlling humidity in the auditorium. And as you know, it's been a troubling summer and this week probably is not going to help. So we bring to you bids for $5,081 uh, to use the sinking fund for this. That would be our recommendation. Ordinarily, our process would have been we'd present the project the year before and would have asked you for your approval. But since we're now using the sinking fund remaining dollars just for emergency projects, that, that's really where this one falls. So we would request approval to issue a purchase order to the low bidder, Hayes Mechanical of Saginaw, in the amount of $5,081. And since we did not include it in the 13-14 budget, our recommendation would be to use sinking fund. I'll entertain a motion and we'll have a discussion. Move approval of item 4.3 uh, related to uh, repair of the, of the compressor, replacement of the compressor for $5,081. Second. Second. Uh, moved by Secretary Kaminsky and seconded by Member Gorton. Questions or comments? Yeah. I have a, did you? Oh, go ahead. No. Have the instruments been moved from Cook School to Central now? Uh, yes, the instruments are in, I want to say room 123. Uh, they are not affected by this. The, the chiller serves only the auditorium. The rest of the building, like Cook, is not climate controlled other than it has heating during the winter time, but there is no air conditioning. And now, what um, state are the instruments in that have been stored in the very cold building all winter for a couple of years now? Uh, that, I don't know. They were moved quite some time ago. Oh, they were? Yes. And I know the music staff looked at the instruments and had determined which ones. I don't believe there was any concern about damage through the storage process, but they looked at all the instruments district-wide about a year ago and assess those that probably needed to be taken out of circulation. So those that are now at Central are those that can be circulated. They're in a, a good location. They're well cataloged. Okay, so is that room going to be cold and it won't affect them? No, no, we, we will continue because we're using the auditorium to have some presence in Central, and so no, Central will not be left at 50 degrees during the course of the winter. Mm -hmm. Water will be on. And do we have any plan for Central now that we've closed it or any of the closed buildings, Jerry? Mike? Well, I think um, that we need to um, strategically look at a long-term plan for all our closed buildings as we go forward. So, um, again, in my first 60, 90 days, going out looking at our building sh conditions of our buildings, the closed buildings, um, just an initial thought and plan that I've talked a little bit with some of the board members about at this point, Kim, is you know, should we go out and put a group of people who initially to begin to look at a long-term plan of what we're going to do with our, all of our facilities? Very much needed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Yeah, and I, I think Linda had answered my question about um, this being not for the whole building, it's for just preserving that auditorium function, just which auditorium. is, you've answered my question, mm -hmm. so. Okay. Any others? Seeing no one move to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> The ayes have it. Move on to item 4.4 and turn it back to Mr. Sherrill. The uh, Foundation for Foreign Study approached me about uh, having board approval to uh, place a student in our district. And so it was a short timeline, so I did the vetting myself. I made several calls to several districts. Um, some, some of them have been working with this organization for over 20 years. Um, very satisfied. I spoke with the local rep, which is something that you uh, require as a board. And so there is a local rep that would uh, follow up and be there for the placement of the, the students. So I ask for your approval on this organization. I'll accept a motion. Move approval of item 4.4 of um, the EF Foundation for Foreign Study. Support. 
Moved by Member Gorton and supported by Treasurer Branstad. Any questions or comments? I, I have a quick question, just I guess because I don't know how this works. So all the foreign students we normally get are through other organizations, and this is just an additional organization that wants to have? Correct. Okay. The other organization's been approved at some point in time okay. by all the right. board. All right. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments? See none move in a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. We'll move on to curriculum instruction and I'll turn it over to Mr. Cooper. I have uh, three books for you this evening. They don't require any action. They're just being presented for the 28D period of examination. Uh, there's one for <coughs> IB 20th Century World Topics, one for Marketing Point 3, and one for Sales m uh, Management uh, A, which is accelerated. Uh, like always, the books will be available for review outside the Curriculum and Instruction Office for the 28-day period. Thank you. Any questions or comments to Bob? Have the teachers looked at these books yet? Yeah, they, they all, uh, all books before they get to this part have been reviewed and actually chosen by teachers in those subject areas or, or in that particular class, just depends. So, yep, these are all brought forward with signatures and support of the teachers and the administrators in those areas. Okay, excellent. Thank you. That's a long-standing procedure yep. we've had for all textbooks. Because mm, when I spoke to the elementary teachers, they didn't feel like they had any input in that. Of course, it was four years ago, but... Uh, all the ones that I've ever been involved in since I've been in the World Coordinator, just 13 years, have all gone through um, selection process with input from everybody. And having approval by all the teachers? Uh, they actually, the majority of the work gets done when you talk elementary in what are called, uh, well, we call them uh, PD groups, if you will, because you divide the elementary teachers up in the four major subject areas. Um, they all get sent out to buildings for input from everybody, uh, which means we get all their input back. And then typically the actual vote itself is taken by the 50 or 60 people that sit on that particular committee. And how unanimous are they usually? really just depends. I think if anything is too close, um, most coordinators and curriculum specialists will wait and work on it. They try to look for always something that's clear cut. Um, if you're asking if you can get 100% agreement, that's usually almost impossible because people will select certain books and they like certain things about it. But, but I would say most, most uh, coordinators and the curriculum specialists would wait if they didn't have something that was a clear cut choice. Now, are you finding primary year program books um, for the elementary years? Um, since we just started and we're in the consideration phase, there really aren't textbooks that you purchase for that. It's really a use of the curriculum that you currently have. Um, it's not a uh, selection of textbooks like you might do for a DP program. It's not subject specific. So it wouldn't really have any textbooks that go with it in that kind of, in the same way you think of a high school course, it wouldn't be like that. Does the middle years program have textbooks that go with it? Uh, not necessarily either. Again, uh, though it would depend, I guess, a little bit. Uh, I was just doing some reading. There's a new middle years program out there, um, which is called the new model, which they're switching over to. And it's happening as we talk. So there's not a lot of information out there. But up till now, no, they don't have specific textbooks. Again, it's more of a overreaching, uh, overriding philosophy and, and uh, working on applications across curricular areas so you don't pick necessarily textbooks again like you do at the DP program. Now with the Common Core I had heard that it was aligned with the IB and that our math um, curriculum was kind of switching from different grades and my daughter's kind of been caught in the middle of this middle years program where the sixth grade <coughs> extended program and then they had the IB seventh grade math which uh, there seems to be some holes in the curriculum. Are, is there any way to solve this problem so there's not such a big jump from sixth grade extended to seventh grade and then eighth grade algebra? I don't think any of that would have anything to do with the IB or the Common Core because we're just at the development stages of those. They're not totally there. Um, the extended math of the pre-algebra in seventh grade is actually a really a common uh, jump it's not anything unusual that you wouldn't find almost any place else so that especially in that upper track that's a pretty common going My from older sixth grade daughters math, had they had a different track though they did algebra in ninth grade and then they did the pre-algebra in eighth grade 
and just advanced seventh grade math. So right, that's but where when, it seems when they were doing that too, additional info. There was no sixth grade extended math back then either. Oh, there was. They did have. They were just on the cusp when it started, though. Well, so. the, the actual course has only been around for the extended okay, math. Okay, so this one has changed. This one's different. This extended than the math has been did. around for oh, about okay. the last six years. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? See none. We'll move on to finance and turn it over to Linda. And this is for information. We have a total of seven gifts totaling nine thousand one hundred ninety dollars seventy-seven cents. And the first five are all from the Dow Chemical Community Gives Fund at the Midland Area Community Foundation. And as we've discussed in the past, these are gifts that require the recipients to perform some sort of community service in order to qualify for the money. So we have the volleyball team at Dow High School, the Midland High School JV and varsity girls basketball teams, and the Midland High School freshman and JV baseball teams have all provided some sort of service in order to qualify for the amounts, which are typically $1,000. Uh, Per, per group. The next item also is from the Midland Area Community Foundation. It's the Midland Violence Prevention Partnership, providing support for middle school's parent nights on a variety of topics. Uh, then we also have a gift. We refer to it as gift because it's money that's coming into the general fund from the Seabird Elementary Building Account, and it is to help fund a two-day bullying prevention seminar for incoming kindergarten and new students at Seabird. So we thank our donors. Yes, I'll add to that. Thank you very much. And thanks for the kids for putting in some time for service too. So thanks to the donors. Move on to human resources and Mr. Verlindi. Yes, we've had some retirements over the summer. Following staff members have announced their retirement and the effective dates are listed. Carol Brown, teacher at Jefferson Middle School. Uh, June 13th was her last day of last school year. Carol Schreiber, paraprofessional at Plymouth Elementary, July 1, and Shirley Vincent Rose, teacher of Midland Public Schools, effective June 13, 2013. And uh, uh, the board and staff extend their deepest sympathy to the family of Mrs. June Bartlett Holmeister, who passed away on July 20th. Mrs. Holmeister began her employment with Midland Public Schools in 1966 and moved to the position of social worker in 1969. She retired after 19 years of service with Men Public Schools. You know, I mean, well, the technology. Right. If you remember in July, we brought to you the uh, acceptable use policy. Basically, it's a revision of our uh, older acceptable use policy uh, because we want to start branching out into more with mobile computing. Uh, we're talking about for communication, uh, social media, and for uh, other uh, purposes, uh, use of cloud services um, in a variety of uh, uh, strategic ways. But we need to update the policy to allow that to happen. Generally, this is not a more restrictive policy. It's a less restrictive policy. But it also spells out the responsibilities of all staff and students um, as far as use of these so that we don't have um, sensitive information uh, being out and available to a wide variety of people and it spells that out. We've heard nothing over that 28-day uh, uh, period which we've had the policy out there and so we bring it back to you for action. I'll accept a, a motion. I move we approve um, the technology item 8.1. Support. Moved by Treasurer Branstad, support by Secretary Kaminsky for the new acceptable use policy. Um, any questions or comments? I, I did have a comment. Um, thanks to Mr. Sobel and Mr. Saber and Mr. Verlindi, it, it allows us to keep the technology fresh, up to date, relevant, and uh, I know this student safety had a lot to do with this. Yes. Um, a lot of the, the risks and things that could potentially affect our students 10 years ago was not invented, the things that, that they have now and potential risks. So I, I know you've kept that in mind in developing that. So it allows us to keep this up to date and move forward. Thanks, John. Any others? <coughs> Seeing none, we'll move into a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Silence on the opposed. So action passes.
With that um, in the agenda, there was a correspondence to and from the Board of Education, a listing of our, of our future meetings. Um, I'd remind board members that we move back into formal time again on the next board meeting when school starts. So those of us males who do not have a tie on today will have one next week. <laughs> um, at that point, we'll move into study discussion session and I'll begin to my right, Kim. Yeah. Well, the only thing I really wanted to talk about was uh, the wonderful letter that uh, Mike Shero sent out to all of administration about how we can save money in the future. Um, I would love to play the um, radio interview. We, it's about 13 minutes. Do you think we have time about Superintendent Flanagan's initiative for us to save money? Or should we bring that up later? Will you do a presentation on yeah, we can we can um, bring that into a presentation form. Um, thoughts and ideas where we're looking for consolidation versus playing that, that film. Yep, um, I, I did think Superintendent Flanagan did a nice job on that, trying to explain his thoughts. He certainly, you know, wasn't going about um, trying to close school districts or, no. or provide those pieces out there. And so that might have been misinterpreted when he started off. But um, in our case, he also mentioned uh, one of the reasons I sent that out was that there were some unusual places where. Um, consolidation with RISAs or ISDs may not be the answer. It may be something different. He didn't really go into great detail on that. And certainly um, in Midland County, this is a unique situation with Midland Public Schools being the size of this. And so maybe um, we could possibly provide some of those resources to some of the other districts in the area and look at consolidation that way. And so initial discussions with the other three locals in the ESA, we just briefly talked about it. but. Um, my initial discussions with them have gone very well. Good. And you come from a streamlined district, so you know the benefits. I, I have so. seen that firsthand. You want I just wanted to say welcome back, everyone, and I uh, hope everybody has a good learning year. And like so many years in the past, I'm still wondering where summer went. <laughs> John? Well, we, we didn't have another meeting this month, and I had a few things that I wanted to, a lot of it is a pat on the back uh, to those in our, um, our district. Um, definitely back to school. Um, it's nice to start that out with the welcome launchers with the new ch teachers. I think we have about 25 to 30 new teachers, and it was nice to get time out to meet a few of them. And I sat at a table with four new uh, teaching staff members coming in. It was just really neat. They're all new to the community, and uh, look forward to their fresh ideas and uh, fresh perspectives. Um, and I know tomorrow we have our um, open staff meeting. I look forward to that. Um, I did see on the, the agenda, if I can uh, share that, uh, Mr. Delinsky is going to be speaking. I'm sorry, Dr. Dick Delinsky is going to be speaking from the Legacy Center. I heard a wonderful compliment from a middle school parent that had attended one of the orientation sessions. And they were remarked about how students having the certain number of um, uh, developmental assets reduce their risk for yeah, at this transition of middle school. And uh, they were really quite impressed with that presentation. It was just really nice that our uh, school system can give that information and help empower parents and maybe call, calm some of their fears as far as they transition in their kids from the elementary into the, uh, into the uh, middle school process. Um, I did go to um, Michigan Association of School Board uh, meeting uh, August 9th and 10th. Um, and uh, soon I'll be done with my basic uh, certification courses. There's nine or ten courses that you take, so I have not too many more of those to go. Um, I took a course on uh, data-informed decisions. It looked at the board roles and uh, making decisions related to strategic goals and student learning, which is very interesting how we can use uh, that to better uh, plan and uh, move forward in our district. Uh, community relations piece, and this is kind of where I thought of Mr. Sharrow, is uh, it showed how, s how communities think how to understand the demographics, how to look at um, social media and so forth. And I just, I just think about the number of people that have uh, mentioned Mr. Charles' uh, education or his communication style has been well received. And I, I think that that was really a, a really good start in that direction uh, and community relations. And then I attended a course on policy uh, that went over the road of role of board policies and uh, how they provide guidance and direction for the superintendent, which helps us clearly articulate our wishes and our policies to you, um, but also how policies can help the board operate efficient, efficiently by making a single decision that applies across um, 
situations and individuals. So I, I thought it was really, uh, really a, a good a way to understand the benefits of policy in, in, the, in the Board of Education. Uh, congratulations to Marnie. Uh, thanks to her years of dedication uh, for our special education students. Uh, welcome aboard. Um, and uh, I think that that would be it. Um, never mind. I'll pass to Angela. All right. Well, just want to say welcome back. I took a day off of work last week, and I got to help out at um, Jefferson Orientation. And it was great to see. There are some new kids there, and it was good. Um, and then I got to go over to Dow High after that. So um, I say welcome to all the new students. I know just from my own interactions and people I know, there's you know people coming into our district from just outside our community who have chosen Midland Public Schools for their children this year. And thank you very much for um, doing that. And um, I know we're off to start. I came right here from a soccer game tonight. So I know a lot of high school sports are already in full swing. It's been uh, very fun. And um, so hopefully we'll all be off to a great year. And the only comments I had were twofold. One, John covered on the opening meeting tomorrow. So welcome everybody back tomorrow and uh, as we go into the year. And lastly, just uh, as, as Mike has come on board uh, for the rest of the board and the public to understand, he and I have been meeting every two weeks, uh, just in more of a mentoring of what Midland's about, introducing them to people uh, as he's made the rounds around community leaders, staff, et cetera, et cetera. Um, he'll be coming forward here in the next few meetings, I'm not going to commit him to an exact time, on uh, determining how we go forward for strategic planning, including the building plan that he mentioned today, uh, and our programming plans as we go forward. And so he'll be proposing a process to us here, and I'm not going to say it's next month or even the month after that, but it's here in the first half of the year as we go forward. So just wanted that out there. Right. Turn to Mike. Actually, Dr. Kaminsky triggered something that I didn't write in my Friday letter that I should bring up today, and that was NEOLA. And so we have that policy back, and um, it's quite extensive and quite large, as you can figure. Um, and Cindy and I have to do a last check on that, and we've been, with the rush of the start of school, it's been kind of sitting up on my desk. So we will get to that, and once that's complete, we're going to ask you to approve that document at this point, and then we can. Um, make changes and upgrades to the proper community structure as we go forward and at least we'll have one final document going forward. The other piece that I want to approach you about is getting that piece online searchable on our website and make it a much more usable document than we have at this point in time. So thank you for mm -hmm. triggering that. Mm -hmm. um, it, we sp I spoke again to you about the enha enhancement millage and the process that we're making and so at this point the ESA is in full um, support of having that. They're looking at the February election cycle. They're in contact with Truen. We were expecting some little more information back to provide to you tonight, but I haven't gotten that as a, at this point in time. Let's do that timeline. February's coming quicker than we think, and so we have some work to do real quick. It is just a renewal, so you don't have to probably do as much work as you've had in the past, but we certainly need to um, educate our community when that renewal is needed. I, um, did receive a call back today. I was out of the office from Chris Imanero from Truen, who is our election attorney, to talk about the 18 mil non homestead, which is not going to expire until summer of 2015. Um, but do we do the taxpayers a favor by having the two renewals together on the one um, election cycle? And so, um, need his advice, legal advice, certainly, if that's proper or, or um, causing any issues by doing that, going out further forward. Science and math coordinators, as you know, with uh, Mr. Cooper's moving into the position that he has, we left kind of the math coordinator position vacant, and Randy Shadig has resigned and uh, accepted the superintendent's position back in, I think, really the district that he came from, and we'll list, certainly miss Randy as, as he leaves. Um, with both those positions, there's an opportunity to, um, at this point in time, maybe fiscally be very some responsible, and certainly with me being new, um, I'm not fully sure about consolidation of resources and where that's done properly. Um, we've done some temporary um, reassigning of those assignments to save us some fiscal responsibility. Um, so we have two of the teachers that we're going to release um, part of the day in order to do the professional development side, um, but we are going to reassign some of the duties going forward and you have them there written um, where Penny Miller, Miller Nelson is going to pick up the lead on project-based learning that Randy left the void for in the science portion 
that Randy also left. Jeff Lauer has stepped forward and he's going to pick up the music portion of that, which uh, Randy also carried, and be a backup to the PBL um, to Penny. Uh, we had Penny backing up Randy prior to that piece of it. And the two teachers that we're um, going to use for the PD portion of that is Christy Gayhart in science and Brendan Smith in math. And so we've covered it in that manner at this time. Um, I sent you a proposed revision to our bus drivers. Um, uh, co not contract, but their compensation. Um, there's some rationale in there where we're looking to um, encourage our staff to use their sick days um, in a better manner than they have. And also, we spend a lot of money on There's a lot of money and a lot of training into training bus drivers for school service. And um, we've been losing those people in too short a period of time. Um, and so with that turnover, we need to encourage our bus, sub bus drivers to be there as well. So there's two pieces that Linda has worked on um, with staff, and she's proposing that to you, and we'll bring that to, to you for an action item in September. Uh, newsletter and so talking about communication in the previous district I, I was in um, we had a newsletter that we mailed into every resident's home in our district that certainly isn't um, possible in the size of this district cost wise um, one of the things that was interesting when we would pull our community um, we would ask them the number one source of information they they received from the school district and we would ask about our newspapers and other sources, but always the, the, our school newsletter came back as the number one source of received information. So I think it can be very powerful. Very powerful we can get it into all homes, certainly homes with out school, uh, school children is something that we struggle to get information into and there's more of those than there are homes with school children in, in them in Midland Public Schools. So we need to be able to communicate with them as well. Uh, the Midland Daily News may play a part into this. Um, Cindy and I are looking at doing that electronically um, with the possibility of using uh, the Midland Daily News and uh, where they put flyers into their newspaper and what cost that might be in order to send our newsletter home four times a year um, into the home. So we're still exploring that piece of it, but it's a possible communication piece we can do as well. And I um, want you to let you know that I'm going to slightly change your board meetings um, where we're going to have uh, buildings or departments um, do board presentations to you, something that I've had success with before. Part of it's also educating the board on what we do daily, but certainly also, um, as Cindy calls it, tooting our own horn about some of the good things that are going on in our buildings. Um, we're also going to recognize our employees. Um, we're going to have one superstar employee a month. We'll do that at the second board meeting of each month. And um, those nominations will come from anybody in the community or employees in the district and have some recognition. I think it's a great way to start a board meeting off with a positive tone as well. So that's all I have for you. Okay. Any other comments for the good of the order? Thanks, Mike. Well, there's one thing. Um, school bus mode. Everybody should be in school oh, bus thank mode. You. Every year, thank you. I always every, say that. Yeah, and yeah. I can't believe, I, I forget we're right there again. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So you said it so well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, at my annual pitch, guys, uh, school buses are going to be rolling, and more importantly, kids are going to be walking. And uh, we're used to summer mode driving. Please obey the speed limit signs for school districts. Watch these intersections. Uh, don't assume the kids are seeing you. Please uh, help us out with keeping our kids safe. Thanks for reminding, yep. John. Yep. yep. Thank you. Yep. With that, we'll stand adjourned. Another year.